वेलकम एवरी वन माई सेल्फ प्रियंका चौधरी अ फोर्थ ईयर स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम लखीमपुर कॉलेज ऑफ वेटनरी साइंस टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डिजीज क्लासिकल स्वाइन फीवर इन शॉर्ट सी एस एफ क्लासिकल स्वाइन फीवर इज ऑल्सो नोन एज इंग्लिश स्वाइन फीवर हक कलेरा पेस्टिडी पोर कलेरा पर्सिना इट इज अ हाईली कन्टेजियस डिजीज of pigs and all the age group of pigs are susceptible it is characterized by rapid and sudden onset high morbidity and mortality with generalized edema etiology the disease is caused by the species classical swine fever virus under the genus pestivirus which comes under the family flaviviridae which is a pantropic rna virus pentropic virus means the virus that affects various tissues without showing any special affinity for one of them strains of classical swine fever virus the organism has a close antigenic relationship with bovine viral diarrhea virus and border disease virus the important strains of classical swine fever virus are l4187 L4 tubin gen brasia and c strain coming to the epidemiology pigs and wild boars are the susceptible host the incubation period is usually 3 to 4 days but it can also range from 2 to 14 days coming to distribution the disease occurs in asia south and central america parts of europe and africa but it is also eradicated from many countries including australia canada and united states transmission the disease is transmitted by ingestion and inhalation direct contact with the affected animal is the principal way of transmission the organism is present in all the excretions and secretions of the affected animal and in case of pregnant sow the virus can cross the placental barrier and affect the fetus pathogenesis once the organism enters through ingestion or inhalation primary replication occurs in the tonsil and it spread to the surrounding lymphoid tissue after that it reaches the regional lymph node and replicates there then the virus spread via blood to the secondary replication sites such as spleen bone marrow and visceral lymph nodes and multiplies there coming to the clinical signs the infection occur as acute chronic congenital and peracute form the peracute form is commonly observed in the young pigs the disease develop quickly and terminates in about 24 hours and the pigs die without showing any sign of illness in the acute form there will be high fever that may reach up to 108 degree fahrenheit there will be mucopurulent to purulent discharges from the eyes conjunctivitis can be seen with encrustation of the eyelids the affected pigs appear to be sick inactive and drowsy and huddling of the sick animals is seen purplish discoloration of the abdominal skin cns may be affected in the last stage the pigs become recumbent and convulsions occur before death and reproductive disorder also occur in sow due to infection with low virulent strain the first picture shows conjunctivitis in an affected pig the second is the purplish discoloration of the skin This picture shows huddling of the sick animals. Chronic form in the chronic form morbidity is 90% and mortality is 60 to 70%. There will be sudden unpredictable changes in the appetite. Chronic diarrhea, pneumonia can be seen. Weight loss, hair loss, dermatitis also occurs. and a uh, chronically infected pig may have a disproportionately larger head in comparing to a small trunk this is the picture of animals suffering from severe depression 
congenital form in this infection by the virulent strain result in abortion or in the birth of diseased pigs malformation of the visceral organs and of the cns and trans Transplacental transmission with less virulent strain result in mummification, stillbirth, or in the birth of weak and shaker pigs. The picture shows aborted fetuses in a CSF outbreak. Lesions in the acute form: hemorrhages on the surface of intestine, heart, epiglottis, and larynx occurs. Kidneys on removal of the capsule show pinpoint to achymotic hemorrhages on the surface of the kidney which give them the characteristic turkey egg appearance. Necrotic foci in the tonsils can be seen. Spleen, skin, lungs show infarction. Brain tissue show hemorrhages and edema. Congestion of the lung and bronchopneumonia. The first picture shows the turkey egg appearance of the kidney. The second picture is of a spleen which shows red infarcts along its margin. Coming to the chronic form, in the chronic form the cecum and colon show button ulcers and these are thought to be due to secondary salmonella infection. This figure shows button ulcer surrounded by the zones of hemorrhages. In the congenital form, edema and petechial hemorrhages of the skin and internal organs can be seen. Hypoplasia of the cerebellum, thymus atrophy and ascites also occurs. Diagnosis. It is based on the history and clinical signs. Characteristic pathognomonic lesions like button ulcer and turkey egg appearance of the kidney. Isolation and identification of the virus in cell culture. Animal inoculation. Immunological methods like fluorescent antibody technique, immunoperoxidase test, antigen capture ELISA. Serological test like ELISA, neutralizing peroxidase linked assay fluorescent antibody virus neutralization test and molecular techniques like PCR can be used. Coming to the differential diagnosis, the disease can be differentiated from salmonellosis. In case of salmonellosis, 2 to 4 months of pigs are affected and diarrhea is a leading feature. In swine erysipelas, diamond marking are seen on skin which is absent in case of CSF and the kidney becomes congested and dark red in color. In mulberry heart disease, pericardium becomes distended with jelly-like fluid. In Ojeski's disease, nervous manifestation is seen in the young suckling pigs. In salt poisoning, frothing of mouth, head pressing and grinding of teeth occurs which is absent in case of CSF. Treatment. There is no specific treatment for CSF. Based on the symptoms, symptomatic treatment can be given. We can use hyperimmune serum which may have a value in the early stages of the disease and it should be given at a dose rate of 50 to 150 ml per animal. Coming to prevention and control, the disease can be prevented by vaccination. Modified live vaccines are used. Lapinized Chinese strain, Japanese guinea pig cell culture adapted strain and French thiverval strain have been widely used and all these strains are considered to be safe for pregnant sow and piglets over 2 weeks old. This is the vaccination schedule for classical swine fever. For fattening pigs, a single dose is given at the age of 1 to 2 months at a dose of 1 ml and it is given through IM or subcut root. And for breeding pigs, first vaccination is given at the age of 1 to 2 months, second vaccination is given at 6 months after the first vaccination and revaccinate once a year and the dose is 1 ml and it is given through IM or subcut root. This is the picture of Himvec Hock Cholera vaccine which is widely used in Assam. 
and for eradication of classical swine fever strict vaccination of pigs should be done garbage cooking laws and serological surveys should be followed in case of an outbreak slaughter of all the pigs in the affected farm and proper disposal of their carcass by deep burial should be done we should be restricting the pig movements detailed epidemiological investigation should be done and uh, we should follow good and hygienic husbandry practices in the farm these are the references from where i collected the material thank you